Now there's a couple of other general Windows options it's worth mentioning if I'm talking about setting up a system. First of all, there's the antivirus program that you've got running. Some antivirus programs interfere with EDIUS and some of them just make it a bit slow to run. And I always like to exclude all the EDIUS folders from my antivirus program. So in this computer here, I'm running this thing, which is Windows Defenders. It's the basic antivirus that comes with Windows. It works fine. It's not the best antivirus in the world, but you know, as long as you're careful, it's okay. And a lot of other machines, I actually use Avast. And with Avast, I have to do exactly the same kind of thing as I'm gonna do now with Windows Defender. And what I'm gonna do is tell Windows Defender to not scan the directories that EDIUS is installed into. In this case, I'm just gonna pop into Virus and Threat Detection. Go to Virus and Threat Protection Settings. And you can see I've got a lot of different things here, but one of the options here is Exclusions. And Exclusions lets you tell the antivirus program not to scan certain folders. And EDIUS just works a bit better if you do this. So I'm gonna to go to Add Exclusions, click on the little plus, choose to exclude an entire folder, because I'm quite happy with everything that's in the Grass Valley folder. I know it hasn't got viruses. I'm gonna to go to the Grass Valley folder and select it. And now that's added in that entire folder as an exclusion. The main thing I noticed is that if you haven't done that, then EDIUS actually takes quite a long time to start the first time you run it. With other antivirus programs, it actually stops it running at all. So I'd like to add that as an exclusion. You should have the option for that in all antivirus programs. Certainly it's there in Avast as well and you just go in there and say no exclude the grass valley folder and that'll save you some aggravation later on another thing to bear in mind with edius is if you have a couple of screens and you're using windows 10 like i am at the moment i'm just going to right click on the desktop and go to display settings where you can see my two screens and one of the things you can do in windows 10 which you couldn't do in windows 7 is you can set different scaling for different screens so this thing down here tells you how much the screen is scaled. I've got it set to 125% because that looks a bit better in the video recording. Normally I'd have it at 100%, but I've just upped it a bit so that everything's a bit bigger for this video. Well, you just got to make sure that is the same for both screens. And as you notice, it is. At the moment I'm using two HD screens, so it makes sense that they're both the same scaling. But imagine you had one HD screen and one 4K screen. Well, you might change the scaling on the 4K screen so that everything's actually readable on it. But if you have a different setting for two screens, it can upset EDIUS. It can make it crash. So make sure the scaling is the same on both screens. This is the situation as of EDIUS 9.1. It's vaguely possible they might do something about that in the future. Wasn't an option on Windows 7. You had to have the same scaling on everything. But on Windows 10 and 8, you can have different scaling. So just make sure they're set the same on all screens. If you're using EDIUS on a computer that's got Intel QuickSync in it, you're gonna to wanna to set it up properly to use that. Now to do that, you've gotta make sure that you have a monitor plugged into the graphics card that's built into the motherboard, as well as a monitor that's plugged into a special separate graphics card. Now as long as you plug it in properly, and all the drivers are in, then you should get quick sync, which means you'll get better playback of H.264 based files and you'll be able to encode faster into H.264 as well. The most important thing is to actually get the monitors plugged in correctly. If you go around to the back of the machine, on this machine, which happens to be a Coffee Lake computer, you can see I've got an NVIDIA graphics card here, which is my main graphics card. And I've got connections that go into the motherboard up the top here near the USB sockets. And what I want to do is I want to plug the main screen into my NVIDIA and the second screen into these sockets at the top. You've got to really have two screens plugged in. It doesn't work with one screen plugged in. So I'll have the two screens plugged in and then just open up Windows. It should just pop up straight away and you should be okay to use QuickSync. I do like to pop into the BIOS and find the settings for the Intel graphics card, the built-in one, and up the amount of RAM that's on there. So I always put it up about as high as it can go, which on my particular system, I can go up to a gigabyte of RAM on there. But mainly, you just have to make sure you have the two screens plugged in properly. So it's the main one on the NVIDIA and the second one on the Intel. And then you'll get in there and you should on the export see a little hardware tick box, which lets you use the hardware for encoding. And also if you go into the settings, let's go to the system settings and then importer and exporter. And you have a look at this heading AVCHD, you should see a little tick box here that says use hardware encoder. 
You get a similar one for H265 or HEVC as it says here. Again, use hardware decoder there. Of course, you only get that if you've got QuickSync. If you haven't got QuickSync, then you won't have it. It'll all be grayed out. If you've got it, as long as you've got the monitors plugged in properly, then it should work. If it doesn't, obviously you'll need to do a bit of troubleshooting. I can help out with that if you want to get in touch. If you've bought the ADS through me, then I won't charge for the support on that. Obviously, if you haven't bought it through me, then I'll have to charge for support. But the main thing is make sure you've got your monitors plugged in correctly. Another thing that I actually like to do, and this is not in any way essential, I like to make a backup of my projects automatically onto either another drive or onto the internet as I'm editing them. Now to do this, what you do is you go up to settings and then user settings and come up to application and then project. And here you can see you've got all sorts of stuff about projects, but these are the ones I'm looking for, backups and auto saves. With the auto save, it'll actually automatically save in the background as you're using it. I used to change this because the auto saves used to stop me working, but actually Edis has got better and I don't notice them anymore, so I leave them at the defaults. But the auto saves means that every three minutes it's going to make a backup of the project as it is right now. It's set to go into the project folder, obviously you can change it. I tend to leave that one as it is. But the other option you've got here is backup. Now the difference between auto save and backup is that auto save happens every three minutes regardless. Backup is whenever you manually save it, so you do Control and S, it'll then make a backup of the project somewhere else. So this only happens when you want it to. This one happens automatically. I tend to take this one and I'll leave it making a backup in the project folder, but I will also tell it to do one somewhere else. So pop in here and then choose another folder. Now, if the machine's not on the internet, I'll just make it go onto another drive. So at least I've got a backup of the project on two different drives. The thing that goes wrong the most in the computer is hard drives. Now, you should be backing all your clips up. You should just be doing that automatically anyway. So you should have a backup of all your clips on some other drive. But whilst you're editing, all the changes and all the editing and everything else you're doing, that's going into the project file. They're not very big anyway. But if you lose that, you've got to start working all again. Okay, maybe you've got the clips backed up somewhere, but if you don't have the project, you've got to start doing all that work again. So I like to make a backup of the project on another hard drive, as well as where I'm actually editing, just in case. Because then if the worst thing happens and that drive dies, well, I can get the clips from somewhere else, I've got the project somewhere else, I can get back and working quite easily. I actually set it to go to my OneDrive account. So I've got a Microsoft system, with that, you get the option of using OneDrive, which gives you a couple of gigs worth of storage space on the internet. And I like to use that as a backup place for my projects. I don't use it for the clips because my clips are really, really big, but it's not a problem at all for projects. So I click to select a folder, go browse, and then I go to my OneDrive folder. And you can see I've got a lot of different things in here, but if I go to Edius Projects, and you can see there I've got a lot of other ones that I've already saved, but I'll just select that and now what I get is that when I save the project, a backup is put in the project folder, but another one is shoved into my OneDrive folder. And as it goes into my OneDrive folder, it then also automatically goes up to the internet. Windows just does that in the background for you. Obviously that only works if your machine's on the internet. But I like that because it puts a backup of the folder somewhere else, somewhere that isn't my machine. So if everything does go horribly wrong, I can get the clips from my backup hard drive, I can get the project from my OneDrive folder, and I can recreate it on any machine just with those two things. At least get very close to where I am right now without having to start again from scratch. You could set the autosave to go to the same place. That'll just do more upping and downing on the internet. I prefer just to leave it with backups because the backup thing only happens when I save the project. So it's only when I press Control S and it's when I exit the program. So I'll have a backup there on my OneDrive folder of the project as it was when I finished it. And I just like to do that as a backup. You don't have to, but it's worth doing. Now see, there's lots of other things I could go through here. And I do go through all of these things a lot more in depth in my full Edius tutorial. These are the main ones I really wanted to point out right now for people who are just starting out with Edius. Some things are essential, like setting up capture presets and setting your preview device. Other things are less essential, things like putting on QuickTime, things like saving projects to OneDrive folders and so on, but I like to do them. So anyway, I hope that helps any of you who are setting up EDIUS 9 for the first time. Obviously, if you need to know more in depth, like I said, I do have a full-blown EDIUS tutorial. It's about 20 hours worth of stuff that you can order off of my website. 
I've got a lot of other free tutorials here on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to me on that for more videos as they appear. Follow me on Facebook where I just pop up different bits of news on the world of digital video. And you can also email me david at dvctraining.co.uk with any questions. And don't forget, of course, that you can order EDIUS through the links on my website. You'll actually be ordering it directly from the European distributors, but I will give you support on setting it up in the UK. And so once you've bought it through the links on my website, then you can email me or phone me and I can help you set it up and get it working properly. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.